Hi everybody, Sandra here from Create in Spain and today I wanted to show you a few options that I use when making LED circuits for cards. Now I'm not doing a card design, this is simply to help you understand the circuits if you don't already. Now there are a few things that you will want if you are going to do this. Um, the first one obviously is LED lights for your cards. Now you can go online, you can buy some very expensive LEDs, you can buy some cheap ones, you can buy plain ones, you can buy chunky ones, you can buy all sorts of things. Now you're probably familiar with this sort of fairy light where you have a whole string of lights and they have fancy little caps on them. Now you may or may not realise it but the actual lamps under here are pretty much identical. It's just the cover, which is different. And you can pull these covers off. They are very easy to remove. You can pull them off or snap them back on. So it's not an issue. This particular one I'm going to use today because it's quite decorative and it's going to be easy for you to see. So not a bad idea. Now, the first thing you need to do is decide whether you want a chain of them or whether you want a single one. Now, because I'm doing a very simple circuit here, I'm just gonna show you what to do when you want one. And the first thing you need to do is chop off a couple of these wires. You can chop them off as close as you can, leaving you with just two. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, because I think I'm doing a bit closer. There we are. So that's one form of light. I have a lot of different forms. I've got a funny little thing here that I created from an LED and some fiber optic fiber. This is what I use to test my circuits because it's handy when it's in my box. I can usually find it and just pull it out and I know it works and that's that. We have this sort of thing, which is the slightly more old fashioned type where the bulbs are a bit more bulky and these aren't quite as suitable for card making unless you're going to make a very big card because there's not much room on a small card for these to go. This is the sort of thing which is very, very easy to use if you're going to make your own circuits for cards. Whole string of these things. You can use them individually. Again, just cut off two of the wires, leaving two on one side. Or if you want to do multiple lights on your card, you can do it the easy way and just yes, use a string of them. It doesn't make any difference. It will still work. But you literally cut off as many as you want and you'll use the same technique as I'm going to show you now. It's just that you'll have more lights. And if I get one out of here, some of these are one color and some of them are multicolored. Some of them change color. This is part of a, uh, a strip light. It comes in quite a bulky plastic and people quite often use it for room decorations and party decorations, that sort of thing. But it's a very tough plastic that comes in. But you can strip it down and you can get individual lights off of it. It takes a while. I persevered and I did it. So anyway, two the other things you need. You need a battery. Now, this is a CR2016. It's very, very thin, which means if you're making a card that you want to post, you don't have to make a thick card and make it more expensive for yourself. Also, if you want to make a more delicate card, it does keep the bulk down. Other things you'll probably want are some wire snippers, a nail file of sorts. Now this is adhesive copper tape with a conductive adhesive. That means it doesn't stop the electricity flowing through. I made a real holder for mine because it tends to come undone otherwise. Um, but basically this can be used for fixing circuits, for making circuits, and it's very, very easy. And this one is about, I don't know, five millimeters, something like that maybe. Um, but you can add one layer over another layer. You can make larger patches out of it if you need to. And it's very good stuff. Very easy to tear or to cut. No problem using it whatsoever, it's brilliant. 
So what I want to do is to show you how a circuit, a very, very simple circuit is made without any complications whatsoever. We have a battery and we have a light. Now, one of these wires is a negative and one is a positive. Think about it as your right hand and your left hand. Now, what we need to do to make a circuit and make a light light up is we need to have some copper tape going from one side of the battery, so underneath the battery here, and it needs to join up with that wire, or one of the wires at least, of the light. And then we need another wire, which is going to go from on top of the battery to the other one. Now this can be in a circle, it can be rectangular, it can be wibbly wobbly, it doesn't make any difference as long as you can put the tape down, you can make any shape you'd like. But that is basically all it is. It's joining the negative, the left hand, if you like, going through the light and joining up with the right hand on the top. So from underneath the battery to on top of the battery. And it's very, very simple. So to prepare your little light, you'll need to take the coating off because these lights have a special coating which stops the light shorting out when they're in their normal usage. So they have a very thin kind of varnish or whatever it is put over the wires. And that's where this nail file comes in. It's quite handy if you've got a surface that you can file on. So you can use a piece of foam or work surface or something. You just need to make sure that the coating gets taken off of the ends of the wires. Now you can't easily see it, so the only real way of testing it in this particular case is to test it with the battery. And I'll show you that in a second to see whether you've got it done or not. Now you only want to take off the last couple of centimetres, you don't want to take off any more. So if I've done this enough, if I put one wire on one side of the battery and one side on the other, it'll light up. Oh, there we go, guessed it right, first time. So the smooth side of the battery, the one with the plus, is the positive side. So if you take the wire which is on the top, the one that was working with it on the top at least, and just make a little hook in it. You won't have to test it every time you're thinking of your circuit. You're like, ah yes, that's the positive side. It's got the hook on it. So if I make a circuit now and put some tape down, just take some tape off of here. I mean, some people think this is a really complicated thing to do or that you need expensive kits to do this and you do not need expensive kits believe me you don't all right so this is going to be my left hand if you like going to my negative so i want the tape to go all the way through there and i need it to go around here now you can sort of bend the tape it's better if you keep it as straight as you can if you need to bend it, you can do. You can um, fold it back on itself and change direction and that sort of thing. As long as you haven't broken it, because the adhesive is conductive, you'll be fine. So that's the negative. And so my battery would go on top of that. Now, if I was going to make a card with this, I would put a little bit of double sided tape there and a little bit of double-sided tape there to hold my battery in place. Don't put the tape on top of the copper tape because that'll defeat the object. So I know this is the negative and I know this wire here is the negative too. So I can just take that wire down onto there. And I'm using normal tape for this. Normally I would use the copper tape again just to be safe. 
it's a double belt and braces approach generally as far as I'm concerned with electronics okay so I need another piece of tape which is going to go it's going to be much shorter this one and it's going to go on top of the battery like so a good amount of tape on top of the battery and uh, just take it up here it doesn't really matter where it's going there we are and another piece of tape and I will put that onto there and you can see if I press on the battery to make good contact that light is coming on there we go even more so if I keep the contact on here because as I said it's not taped down with copper tape but that just completes the circuit and that is all there is to it now if you just want to do a circuit and have it on all the time and you're not going to post it to anyone that would be fine because you could tape everything down secure everything and your light bulb will be on hmm. That's not generally what we do when we send a card. We want it to be off when we send it, and we want it to be on, or at least be able to be switched on when somebody gets it. So this is where switches come in. And in order to make a switch, you can choose anywhere along this circuit. It doesn't matter where it is. It's just got to be convenient for your design of your card. And you need to break the circuit. In this particular case, I am going to choose a piece just here and I'm going to break that circuit by taking a knife and cutting some of the copper tape away. So now no matter what I do, that circuit is broken, it's not on. So we need to make a switch, don't we? So there's a few different things that you can do for a switch. You can have a piece of card which has got some of the copper tape on it and you make some runners and you pull the card out and you push it in in order to make contact. Yeah, it's a little bit iffy sometimes. You can also use a switch like this which is really really great. It's just 10 equal segments folded together into sort of like a star shape like that and the bottom two segments have been covered with the copper tape and then when that goes on to there if everything is secure properly it will make the connection so how do you use one of those it's relatively simple all you need is to work out where your gap is going to be and then on the front of your card you put a corresponding slot and then, because you have your wires, or sorry, your copper tape coming down here and coming out there, if your switch is there, it'll be off. If your switch is there, it's going to be on. If it's over that side, it's going to be off. So you need to make your slot just wide enough so that you can have it on or off. And then, as it's slid along, it will switch the circuit on and off. That is a relatively easy thing to do. You can also use things like brads. Now with this one, all I've done is I've taken the legs of the brad and I've folded them in half so they're not as long and I just pinched them together. And again, if I do that, it will come on. So you could theoretically put one of those through a slit and then have that go on as well. You could put copper tape over the front of it if you want but in theory of course that means the back of that is live as well. Possibly not a great idea you would want to put something else on there. I would suggest maybe a little bead or a button or something like that and you could do that. Now what if your card design, you want it to actually be on, 
You don't want it just to be on and off, on and off. You want it to be on, but you don't want to bother doing a slider. You don't want the hassle. Well, I have found another way, and it involves this. Yeah, it's a pill container. You know, one of these things that you just pop your pills out of. There are probably very, very few households in the Western world that do not have some kind of packet of pills where there's a couple already been used and you've got some of these little containers. Now it's made out of some kind of plasticized metal sort of stuff. I'm not quite sure what. Um, if I just put that over there, that is actually going to make the circuit come on. Or at least part of it did. Okay. So parts of that are metal and parts of it are not. What you can do is you can cover this outer side with some tape so it doesn't conduct electricity. Now sometimes you get these which are clear plastic so those would probably be better saving the aggravation. But then what you can do is you can get some double-sided foam tape, you can cut a small piece, put some foil over the top of it and then stick it into the pill container like so. Now I haven't gone completely mad because if you then put that over your gap in your circuit, you can tape it down. When you press on that, it's going to light up. And because it doesn't pop back up, it will stay on. So you have basically a permanent on switch. And you can hide that underneath the front of the card or you can have it sticking out from the card. Personally, I just leave it sticking out and say, you know, push here or something. But that actually does the job quite well. Now you can't switch it off again easily, so it's only suitable for those where you literally want someone to switch it on when they get it. But these batteries last for quite a long time. I had a light which was on, I think it was the, the thicker battery, it was the CR32, and I switched it on, I made a Christmas card and I switched it on, I put it on the mantelpiece and it was there for two weeks and it was still going. So, you know, it's not going to run out that fast, even if that's only got half the life. You're still talking a week. Well, if you're going to bother to put a battery in a card, they might as well have it switched on. So, depending on your design, those are some different options. If you want to go high tech, your switches you can actually purchase switches these are some that I got from China a while ago now when you get them they come like this with four legs sorry I'm out of focus now they come like this with four legs that stay proud so it's literally like table legs so what you need to do is to get a pair of grips and flatten them out a little bit because they're in the wrong shape as they are. Now these particular switches are very tiny, they're only about seven millimeters square and about five millimeters high, so they're not at all bulky. Now the reason I mention these is because if you do want to bother to buy switches from China, you'll need to get them in plenty of time for Christmas if that's what you're going to use them for. And they're not expensive but they will take a long time to get to you. Now with the same circuit, if I just zoom out a little bit, there we go. So those are what's known as momentary switches. Now you can buy switches that do the on off, but I couldn't find any that were small. They were all about one centimetre high, which is a bit too bulky. The other bulbs that I've got, the very tiny ones that I showed you, 
these very very tiny ones that I've stripped out have got three contacts on one side three contacts on the other and with those they literally go across a small gap in your circuit and you use sticky tape to tape them down they're really really great to use once you've got them out and I said some of them are multicolored so they'll flash a different color whenever they're switched on some of them are bright fuchsia or red or blue or whatever and some are white or yellow um, you can buy them in all sorts of different colorways but these are great too because you can literally just put a piece of sticky tape over the top stick it down that's it you don't have to bother with um, decoating the wires so yeah they're just a bit of a pain to get out of the circuitry you could probably buy these loose as is um, at the time I was looking I couldn't find them locally but I could find the strip lighting so I cheated and stripped it all out literally it took me hours to do it and took out individual little lamps but you could probably buy these online um, to put in place without having the aggravation so if I do find any of those I'll put a link down below now I have a complete list of LED cards with different methods of doing switches and things. If you want to have a look at that, I will leave some links above. Take care. See you soon.